All right. So I'm excited to help dive in. You guys dive into some of these things that you brought up mindset, others seeing the value in the product, motivation, pushing the restart, and just overall feeling frustrated. So for those of you that are just joining, I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put a password on so that I don't have to keep clicking like admit, admit, admit. And it'll be something easy that everybody can remember. It's not going to be a bunch of numbers. It's going to be a word probably. But like Megan is cool or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to happy to dive into this and also touch on the ultimate thriver because I think that is a huge way for you to get people into your market. And I am super pumped about it. And I know a lot of you have expressed interest in wanting to do it yourself. So I was going to talk about how we as a team can collectively do this together and hold one, hold one another accountable and just do some fun things with it. Um, so first mindset. Um, I think I know, not I think, I know that this is an extremely challenging year. Um, I, th I know that a lot of you have faced adversity in certain things. And I know that when you are facing hard times or new situations, it is hard for you to remain motivated. It's the fact that you have kids that are now home all the time, and that's something new that you're dealing with, or if it's just even having anxiety surrounding the COVID, because I know that's a real thing, or the political climate that can mess with your brain, or just adapting to new, maybe even just new shifts in your personal life. I get that when those things happen, it's really hard for you to focus on your business because your attention is elsewhere. And when I say it is important to take care of yourself, and to address maybe any issues that you're going through, it is very important. But I also want you guys to stay grounded in the fact that if you remain in that mindset for too long, where is it going to get you? Is it going to propel you forward? Or are you just staying in the same place? And I think we all expect that there's just going to be this spark, this thing that comes along, maybe you hear the right message or you, I don't know, um, watch the right Zoom or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden you just feel like super on fire motivated. And being in this for, it'll be three years for me as well as Sarah. It'll be three years for the both of us in May. Yeah, May. <laughs> it'll be three years for the both of us in May. And you are going to have seasons in your business. There's going to be times when you're like, I just F it. I want to quit. Like, forget it. Is it really worth putting all this work in? And nobody's answering me. Everyone's telling me no. Like, am I really meant for this? And I always, well, anytime I'm feeling that way, like if I'm feeling like I'm having a lack of motivation, if I feel like I'm falling into bad habits, which I can tell you for me, I'll give you my person, how this year has gone for me personally. Um, I felt on fire January, February, March. I was like ready to go. I was enrolling really well. Um, my PPA was super high. It was like 13s, 14s, maybe I think even at one point it was 20 something. Um, I was super motivated. I, now again, that is the best time of year in this business. January, February, March are, are historically the best time to enroll people because they're looking for changes in their life. People are getting tax returns. They're just thinking new year and they're having a rejuvenated mindset on things and they just want to make changes in their life. Right. So it's easy for you to market to people that are ready for a change and they're open for one. Now come all this, the shit storm, let's be honest, come all this crap that has happened this year with the virus and then my kids being home and trying to juggle me going to a part-time job and dealing with challenges there because we have to do new ways to do things and new information. And we had our busy season at my, my job in the summer. It's always busiest in real estate in the summer and trying to navigate that all. Meanwhile, having anxiety about the virus because nobody knew anything about it. And I was super concerned at first, and then it was like almost paralyzing me because I would be checking the numbers every day, 
and I wasn't like doing some of my tasks when I should, or I was like rushing through them at the end of the night and just feeling like, um, I'm like, crap, I'm like losing my business or whatever, because I'm not focused. Anytime I would approach that situation, anytime I was feeling any sort of loss of motivation, because you are not going to be motivated to do something all the time. I don't care what anybody tells you. You are not always going to be like, yes, I cannot wait to add to my network today. Like that is not the case. (laughs) You are sometimes like you are just in the habit of doing everything. Like you're in the habit of taking your three steps. You're just used to feeling normal. The only way that I stir up motivation within myself on the days when I'm not feeling it is I have to seclude myself. I have to step away from my phone, put it down, take time by myself. And I either come at at this one of two ways. I will either write down all the things that I want so badly for my future, for my future, for my children, the things that I want really bad. And sometimes that stuff is just not enough to make you move. You have to think about the darkest place that you've been and how you cannot return there. So for me, that was working a full-time job, not seeing my kids ever, really feeling exhausted because I was overworked and not being able to pay for things like having to calculate for groceries. Like that is not fun. Having to put like five bucks of gas in your gas tank is not fun. And So anytime I'm like, I just got to remember that place that I was when I first started, because there was a reason why you started. It wasn't just because like, oh, I just want to give this thing a shot. No, you were dealing with some sort of issue and you saw this as a solution. So I think, especially after you've been utilizing the products for a long time, you forget what you felt like that first day. Um, maybe it's, you stop using the products for a couple of days and then you, you try it again and you remember, oh yeah, that's why I started using these products. Or you think, try to, try to put yourself back into your shoes. The day that you decided I, I just have to make a change. I just have to. And for me, that was me screaming at my children in the car, always being late and blaming it on my children. And feeling hopeless because I was working so hard at my job and never getting ahead. So I have to sometimes reground myself in those things. If you're in a tough spot, I get that it's, it's hard to, it's hard to think of like rainbows and puppies and (laughs) all the happy things. Um, but sometimes you have to think of like, I have to get out of here. It has to be Tony Robbins always says this, like humans are motivated to move for one of two ways because of one of two ways. You're either motivated to move because you're in a painful situation. So you're, you're motivated to do it because you're in a painful situation or you're motivated to do something because of pleasure. Maybe that's because there is a bonus that's going on. And so that really motivates you and kickstarts you or, Maybe when you're first running after those bonuses right away, or the, even just the excitement of just starting and thinking of the possibilities that this business can do for your family and your life. Um, You either are going to move because of one of two things. And if you feel like the one of two things isn't working, like you got to tap into that other one sometimes, even if it's dark. And for me, that's sometimes like, it sounds super morbid, (laughs) but if I feel like I'm waking up, And I don't have the motivation to do the things that I know I need to do every day. I will think of the worst case scenario of my life and how that is a a very valid possibility if I don't make the right decisions right now in this moment. So I will sit there and think of, you might think of nuts, like my car getting repossessed, or I might think of, um, I don't know, like something bad happening in our family and not being able to afford it and losing your house. And like, I think of all these really bad things. And sometimes that painfulness gets me out of my stuckness because I know that if I don't do the right decisions, this is the effect that could come from it. And I know it sounds super dark and I don't mean to be that way, but sometimes it can be happy. Like having, when's the last time you guys did a dream board? 
with all the things that you wanted. I know I hadn't updated mine in a really long time. And so I had to rewrite in bold markers the things that I want. I don't know if you can see it. The, in bold markers, the things that I want for my life. Like number one is quit my part-time job. And number two is help two promoters go 4K and then help two promoters go 12K. And then it's just pictures of things that I want for my life. And then little snippets of things that nice things that people wrote about me that sometimes I don't believe about myself because sometimes you just don't have the confidence or you just are lacking that belief in yourself that sometimes you have to borrow it from somebody else. No matter how long you've been in this thing, we all go into slumps in our in our business where we feel like, am I really cut out for this? Am I good? I don't know what I'm doing. And for me, it's I, if I'm ever feeling like that, I have to turn to those things that people have said about me. And um, I actually, when I went to Texas, um, Chas, our, one of our millionaire leaders who, whose house it was at, her and I were sitting in her like beautiful loft and she has this beautiful property and all these nice things. And like, it's not even about that. Like you can just feel like her heart and everything, but we're sitting there and her and I are exchanging and having a conversation and she <laughs> looks me dead in the eye and she's like, Megan, there is no reason why you shouldn't be a 200 K right now. And I was like, Oh shit. Like she called me out. <laughs> But sometimes you don't see that for yourself and it takes somebody else saying it to you, to you, for you to believe it. I can tell you like each and every one of you, because of the fact that you even hopped on the zoom at an eight thirty at eight thirty at night or nine 30 for Jennifer, um, that you, you have the potential within you because you take, you're taking it seriously. If you weren't taking it seriously, you would have just brushed it off and made up some excuse that your kid is being nuts or your day was too long or something like that. So the fact that you're taking it seriously means that you are deserving of whatever it is that you want. You are deserving of it. Even if you don't feel like it right now, you are. And I think when especially in this world of social media. And I actually was going to talk about this on a live video today and I totally didn't. And I wish I would have when, because my, I did a Bible devotional today that was talking about like who I'm going to pull it up because it was so good. And I can share this with you if you guys are wanting to do it too, but I just have to read it. It's the, this bottom part. It says, think about a person in your life right now who you often compare yourself to. Is there anything that this person has that you envy or wish you had? Would you, or what would it look like to surrender that thing to God? And trust me, there's, there's people like, there's a girl, like they just announced that Jason Camper um, thing for Cabo or whatever. You guys, I have, I need $400 to lock in Cabo for promoter packs. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> and even because I know, I don't think my husband and I are going to be, would be able to go, even if we had earned it just because of certain circumstances we need to sort out before we could go. But there's a girl that's our sideline, Ashley size. She already earned that Jason camper thing. And I compare myself to her all the damn time because her and I started kind of around the same time. And she's farther than I am. And so I had to take the time and I don't know how many of you are like fully entrenched in God, but you might be thinking to yourself, why is it taking me so long? And that's the question that I asked myself. I was like, why is it taking me so long? And other people are going so much faster than me. And I firmly believe, yeah, I compare all the time too. So it's not, you're not. I'm not immune to it. Nobody's immune to it. Um, so I asked, like, you know, I took that time to ask myself, like, why is it taking me longer? And sometimes it might take you longer to do things because God is preparing you for more. Maybe he is needing you to walk through a specific situation. And I don't mean to get all like preacher on you, but maybe he's asking you to walk through a specific situation because he knows that somebody on your team is going to walk through that situation and he needs to equip you with what you need 
to help that person out. And maybe he like, why wouldn't you want to build a strong foundation? Why wouldn't you want to like, what is the rush? I think we always put this timeline on our life. I think yes, because you know, life you is short. Like you never know when it's going to be your last day or whatever, but why do we put these timelines on ourselves? Why do we put these expectations on ourselves? Nobody said you have to hit 4K in a year. Nobody said that. Nobody said that just because somebody else is walking faster than you that you're on the wrong path. That does not that's not what it means. It means that your timeline is specific to you because you've walked through your own specific situations, you've battled your own specific battles, you've triumphed or triumphed over your own specific um, situations. Like your timeline is unique to you. And I know it's easier said than done, but if you find yourself, myself included, comparing yourself to somebody, myself included, and it is stealing your joy, you need to unfollow that person. You have to, because if you, if it's robbing you of your joy and if it is causing you to doubt yourself because you're watching that other person, you need to remove that distraction from your life and you need to lock onto somebody that doesn't allow you to feel less about yourself, but allows you to see the more inside of you, which I hope that I can do that for you guys is to see the more inside of you. And if you need me to pour that into you, like that's why I'm here. <clears throat> so that's from like the whole like motivation thing. And I get that we have valleys in our life, but how long are you willing to sit there? There's sometimes when you have to be brutally honest with yourself. And I think Jennifer had a really good explanation of this the other day because she was um, late to work. And sometimes we have the best intentions for things like you, you, you know, you get up in the morning and you're like, I'm going to do this damn thing. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to just kill it. But then you're relying too much on your own self will, will, own will, personal will, which as humans, our own free will and our own, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Not own will, willpower, our own willpower. When we're trying to rely on our own willpower and not leveraging somebody else to hold us accountable or even holding our, ourselves accountable by like making a schedule or setting alarms or setting timers or doing something until you can get that, that that habit on pace, you're going to fail sometimes <laughs> because our own willpower isn't as strong as we think it is. And thank you to Clara for sending me the book of Atomic Habits because I stopped reading it for a little bit and now I started reading it again and I was like, this is so good. Um, it, it talks all about how your bad habits never will ever really go away forever and ever and ever. There will all, always be like a slight pathway in your brain that will want to repeat that once you hear that cue. It's like it's like being in a social setting and you want to you want to drink because that's your cue. Or it's like when you walk in the kitchen, you want an Oreo because that's what you always do or something like that. You got to change the cue. You got to change the habit. And sometimes you can't rely on your own willpower to do the things that you know you need to do. So for me. That was for a couple days. I had to I had to lean heavily on Steph to hold me accountable. And that means like she would message me and say like, hey, are you doing your things? And then I would notice if maybe she wasn't getting back to me, I would start to slide a little bit. And I'd be like, maybe she'll forget about me because <laughs> I'm having a bad day today or whatever. But then I realized like I can't rely if I can't rely on her because she has a busy schedule. I feel like you're in my house. <laughs> if you can't rely on, like, I felt like I couldn't rely on her because I know she's busy. So then I was like, okay, I need to find a different way to hold myself accountable. So you know what it was? I painted my entire office because I knew if it was a space I enjoyed being in, I would be productive and I would do something. And I also started just creating new habits stacked on other habits. And I think I talked about that. Oh, that sounds really good. Um, we're going to start the ultimate thriver. So quit talking about Oreos. Um, 
But I had, I was like, if I want a space where I know I'm going to be productive, I have to do something drastic. So I completely painted my entire office and now it's a space I love to come to. And I, when I'm up here, I'm very productive. So maybe that's creating a new space. Maybe that's saying, maybe that's setting a bunch of alarms that are so annoying that you'll be like, oh my God, shut up. Fine. I'll add people to my network or whatever. Um, or maybe it's before you do an action, you have to do this before you can do that. Like if you like to sit down and watch Netflix with your significant other, maybe it's, you have to, before you sit down, you task yourself to send out five messages real quick. Cause the stuff that we have to do in day in and day out, you guys, it's not hard. It isn't difficult to comment on people's posts. It is not difficult to click a follow button. <laughs> it is not hard to send a message. Even if you're scared, is it hard to physically type it out and hit the send button? No, it's not. And <laughs> see, there you go. Got my beard. I love you, Heather. <laughs> um, but where was I? It's not hard. And I did this, I did this story the other day, I actually stole a post that I made before and I broke it into a story and unfold story is what I call them when it's like slide by slide. And I needed to hear that message again, which maybe it wasn't even for my audience. It was for myself <laughs> selfishly, but like, what are the hard things that you've had to walk through? Because adding 10 people to your network every day is not hard compared to what the tough stuff that you've walked through. But I can tell you that it is so worth it if you actually do the thing. Um, I want to make sure that I touch on everybody's things. So I, ho I hope that piece was helpful. Others seeing value. Um, are you, sp are you speaking from your truth or are you trying to speak like somebody else's truth? So are you trying to borrow how somebody else is saying something instead of saying it like you would say it is what I would say. So there would, there was once a time when I would follow certain leaders that I, they're not even on our team and I still follow, I follow them now again. Like I stopped following them for a while because a stealing my joy B I think it was diluting my message. So I had to like get back and reroute it into myself. Um, if you're trying to copy somebody too much, you lose yourself and then your audience, you lose your audience because it feels fake. If that makes sense. If you're not somebody that uses the word y'all don't use the word y'all. I'm not from Texas, but for whatever reason I say y'all and I say soda. I don't know. why. <laughs> That's just what I do. But like if Jennifer, well, it might make sense for Jennifer because I feel like she says y'all and she, it actually, like if Sarah would say y'all, I'd be like, what? Like that doesn't make any sense because <laughs> that's not who she is. So are you trying to borrow the way somebody else is saying something or are you speaking your own story through your own mouth with your own words? So what does that look like? If So for me, it was re restructuring how I said stuff. I swear. And I mean, you all know that I used to be like, I can't swear on social media. Like, I don't want anyone to like unfollow me because I swear. I'm not saying like drop F-bombs on your social media if you do say the F-bomb because I will never say the F-bomb on my social media, typically. Um, unless you're trying to drive a point home. Um, but I'm not going to pretend like I'm somebody that does not swear because that is not me. Um, so I started using words that I use when I talk. If I'm in my story, sometimes I say like, you, you got to get in the shit or like you, you know, you, I think I wrote the word damn in one of my other ones, like, cause that's what I talk like me pretending to talk like somebody else is not going to get my message across because I'm not living my story. That means so if you're trying to take somebody's post, I know it's really easy to like copy and paste. And I know it's really easy to look at somebody's post and be like, I like how they said that and then want to use it because it worked for them. But just because it worked for them does not mean it might not, it might work for you. So if you're trying to get others to see value in what you're saying, you first got to start with saying it the way that you would say it and speaking about your story and nobody else's. 
what are the things that you were struggling with? What are those things? You, yes, you have to appeal to your audience, but when you start talking, like these are the things that I struggled with before, and it's real to what what's going on with you, you will hit the right people that you're meant to hit. I know like social media is like, this thing that everyone wants to make perfect and you want to like have the right combination of things and you want to want it to seem perfect and you, um, I don't know, like you, I think we overthink it honestly is what it is. Yes. It's nice to have a good picture, but like, if you're not getting good responses off of like super filtered pictures, like don't use super filtered pictures. Like you don't have to, I don't think Sarah ever uses filtered pictures. And she's killing it. <laughs> but like that might work for me because that's just, that's my thing. Like I love doing photography. Maybe that's something I need to add into my five things, but I love doing photography. I like taking pictures of myself. I like taking pictures of other people. I like to edit. I like to do fancy things, but like that might not be your jam and that's okay. Maybe your jam is like your house is insane all the time. So like, I think of you, Clara, you have kids at home. And your, um, your son is autistic. Like, I'm sure life is not perfect at all. Whatsoever. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm sure no. 90% of the time it's a hot mess, right? Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. do more of that. Like, I know, like, I, my, I should. yeah, you should just be like, my life is a shit show sometimes. <laughs> But don't say you should show unless you, that's actually how you talk and say the only way that I can get through these days sometimes is because of this. Like it doesn't need to be perfect and be all inspirational and da, 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 da. Sometimes it just needs to be like you. It just right. needs to be you. Like Jennifer, I think of you and your son loves playing army guys and you are, you're working this crazy job or whatever now that is like, you're like, sometimes my job makes me want to pull my hair out, but thank God I have this. Otherwise I would probably be bald right now. Or it is now the thousandth time that I'm playing army dolls. Can anyone else relate? Like who has a kid that plays the same thing over and over and over again? I can tell you this will save your life with your patience because I've been in that situation where my daughter's like, let's play aerial dolls and then she always bosses me around and I'm like I don't want to freaking play aerial dolls anymore you always tell me what to do like that's that's what it is it's living your deep your- to a T like that is that's deep to a T he bosses me around <laughs> <laughs> so I think the thing with you that would have people uh, see the value in what you're trying to say is you saying the real thing like my son drives me crazy when he asks me 999,000th time to play armies. Who else can relate to that? Because I'm sure every one of us that has children on this can relate to that. And the only way that I don't feel like going bonkers and screaming is because of this black sticker or whatever it might be. Um, Melissa, I know that you have a crazy, crazy job that it's, it's physically demanding. You're going through a lot of challenges. Talk about how, has anyone had a job that like literally sucks all the energy out of you and you still have to take care of a kid when you get home? Like the only way that I can do that now is because of this. Sarah, I know for you, your life is insane. I'm sure it's a little like less hectic now that like your kids probably can't do sports, but you can relate to that. I'm sure too. Or like Randy, as you're into this new chapter, like talk about how feeling good is important to you. Feeling good in this situation so that you can discover like where it is you're going. Like those things are important. So that's how I can, I think you can have others see value. Start living your story. Not anyone else's, not my story, not Randy's story or Claire's story, like your specific story. Because the more you talk about your specific story and how this is really helping you, that is when other people will start to see value because they see you being a human, not a robot or somebody that's trying to be perfect, which I might have the perfect picture sometimes, but in my stories, I'll be like, I'm a hot flipping mess. Like 
yesterday I was talking about, you got to get the sweatshirt. If you're not shopping at Walmart, you need to start shopping at Walmart because this sweatshirt was only 16 bucks. And then I had a big banding on my finger. And oh, by the way, I slit the crap out of my finger when I was trying to make enchiladas for dinner. Like, just be real. I hope that helped with that part, like other seeing value. Like, I think when you're trying too hard to say the perfect message, it gets lost in translation. You just got to like live your truth and live your story and how crazy chaotic you might think it is. Nobody else is perfect. Nobody else on your, your, like moms are pushing shit out of the way so they can take a picture with nothing in the background. Let's be honest. Like me, I do that. I like pile on my daughter's Barbies that are scattered all over the floor. Or sometimes I'll talk about it in my stories. I'll be like, this is what my life really looks like. Cause my four-year-old, she's now five, but five-year-old is a flipping tornado and leaves her shit everywhere. <laughs> and I would not have the energy to pick up all her toys at the end of the night. If it wasn't for these three steps, you guys, and you have to trust me. So when you speak with conviction and you speak bubble guppies, oh no. <laughs> Who said bubble guppies? <laughs> oh, bubble guppies. <laughs> um, I kind of addressed mindset and motivation in the same in the same piece. Um, you gotta believe that you can do this because I believe that you can do this. I am not bringing somebody onto my team unless I know for a fact that they have the capability within them, because it is more work for me to. <laughs> try to deal with somebody who is not a right fit than, than for me to like breathe life into you guys that I know all of you can do this. I know all of you can. Um, pushing restart. I think if you've fallen off, maybe you haven't shared. I think it's hard for you to think of like, how am I going to talk about this when I haven't been talking about it? Maybe you haven't posted about it for a while. Maybe you haven't talked about it in your stories Maybe you haven't gone live in a really long time and you're like, now I'm like afraid to because you build up that confidence as you're doing the lives more frequently. And then if you don't do it for a while, you get that like feeling like, what if I mess up? It's like you're starting over all over again. So you start to have those like seeds of doubt creep into your head. Like, oh no, the best way to restart is to just start. And to, to be honest with people, I think if you've been battling life or if you've had some changes that have happened and you haven't really shown up, I think you need to tell people that because people will appreciate your honesty. And like I did a post the other day, again, don't copy my posts because I am not you. Um, <laughs> Where was it? Da, 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 da. I need Jeopardy music in the background. I was like, truth is, I've been having a lot of mental battles recently. I've skipped workouts, spent too much time on TikTok, and eating all the wrong foods, which is all facts. Unhealthy cope. <laughs> and I got comments in there that said, like, I needed this. Thank you. Because I'm being real people are battling crap right now. Like you're not the only one that's facing a battle. Everyone is facing a battle right now in some way, shape or form. You're either going into one, you're in one or you're coming out of one. Always. You're either going into a battle, you're coming in or you're in the battle right now. Like you're in the thick of it or you're coming outside of the current battle that you were dealing with. And that goes for anybody that's on your social media. And if you don't share what you have you could miss the opportunity to change somebody's life. Like I, you know, Randy said, like, I love these products and I love these people. Do pe other people not deserve to be a part of this? Like, I always think, where would I be if, if I hadn't have reached out to Seth? Like, what if she wouldn't have posted that day, that specific thing? And like, it might not have been a big deal to her. She was probably just throwing up a post, but to me, it was everything. Cause she was like, if, are you having a, sh if you're having, or if you hate Mondays, you should reach out to me. It might've been just something that she threw up and didn't even think twice about. But to me, I was having the worst Monday ever. And it hit me at the right point. 
do other people not deserve to experience these products and what they've done for you? I can tell you through now going through the last two retreats that I've been to and having the opportunity to listen to other people's stories. And that's why it's so important to plug into some of these like Lavelle live calls. I think a lot of these Zooms don't go into people's stories enough. They just talk about like their tips or whatever. But do you know how many people that these products literally saved their life? (laughs) There is a girl, her name is Summer Romero. She legitimately, I have goosebumps just even talking about this. She legitimately thought about committing suicide the day that she took the products. She said that she was going to go into her car, sit in her garage and turn it on because she had lost her mom. I'm like getting teared up because it's so true. She had lost her mom and she had, she just felt like she had lost all of her hope. And she had let the Thrive sit on her counter for like weeks or something like that. And she's like, I decided to take those products that day and it saved my life. Like you have what it could be to save somebody else's life. It's funny that you brought that up. I was watching that Zoom and the man in my life was like, you guys are crazy. This is not a life-saving product. And they're like, no, but you don't get it. It, it gave her hope, you know, it made her feel okay. It gave her hope. And that's what it is. And I think a lot of people need that right now. Oh God, more than ever. So many people are in such a dark place right now. Maybe they've lost a job. Maybe, um, their, their moms that are at home and they're going flipping crazy with her kids and all her damn homework and seeing Google Classroom with missing documents pop up for the ninth time this week. <laughs> I don't know where I would be right now, you guys, if I did not have these products. I don't know where I would be. Like, like Heather said, when I tried it that first day, it was like a flash of hope had been given to me because I forgot for so long what it was like to feel important and to feel good and how many people right now are just searching for hope and you have exactly what they need exactly what they need and you can even say that you might think it is some stupid sticker because I know I did too when I first started I thought, oh, there she goes again with that dumb sticker. But let me tell you, when I actually put those products into my body, they gave me hope for the first time in my entire life as a mother, because it did. It gave me energy. It got me excited again. It made me feel like I could accomplish anything because I just felt energy for the first time that was like real energy, not that shit you get from an energy drink. Like that is what it's about. And I think when you get used to taking the products for so long, you forget what that day was like. Claire, I will never forget the day that you messaged me ever when you're like, what is this? Like, I will never forget that. I will never forget those days. I'll never forget the day that Amanda was like, I feel like I could stand on top of a mountain. Like I will never personally forget that. And you can be that for somebody else. Whew. So I just want you guys to know, like you have it. It is selfish for us not to share because you could deliver someone from the dark place that they're in right now. I think of my friend, Nicole, um, Morrison, I don't know what she has on there, Kint now or something like that. I think of my other friend, Nicole Ashley Johnson. She said like she was so wrapped up into taking care of this kid that's like special needs that she was exhausted and she never took care of herself and she wore sweatpants all the time and she never did her hair and she never did her makeup and she just felt felt like a piece of garbage and she got up and actually was energized one day and put on makeup for the first time and she felt so good. We have what people need. (laughs) I'm telling you, if you've forgotten your own story, you got to plug into someone else's because it's life changing. Every time Summer tells her story, she cries. Every time I tell my story, I cry because my son came up to me and said to me, 
I don't know what this is, but you're happy and I like you this way. And I was like, holy crap, I was an unhappy person. I'm sorry. It woke me up to the exhausted life I was living before. So that's how you can push the restart is remembering why you started. And if you don't have the fire of your own story anymore, you need to plug in so that you can borrow someone else's fire for a minute and be reminded how truly life-saving these could be. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Like kids are intuitive. They're much more intuitive than we think. They pick up on that stuff. Um, yeah, it's life-changing, you guys. So frustration when people tell you no. I really, like, I think after a while you just get used to it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to put it. I get that it's frustrating when you guys um, put up a sample post and then the person doesn't respond to you. Like, I just signed up a, promo a promoter today and she was supposed to order and I sent her credits. I don't know if she ordered. And I know her personally. Do I take that personally? No. If she doesn't order, I'll pull back my credits and I'll try again. Because I know, I know what it's done for each and every one of you. Because you've told me, I know what it's done for myself. Because we share this all the time. The it's not even necessarily about the money. It's the community sometimes. I mean, and the money for me, but it's the community. Like, you can get frustrated if one person tells you no, but I'm like, you're last. Next. Or it's just not your time yet. And that's fine. It's just not their time. Keep moving. I just had a customer order two weeks ago. I just have to share this because it was a long process, like a really long process. It is about timing for people. Where is she? I just talked to her today. I had a guy that we went to high school with, not friends with him, friends with him on Facebook, literally. I couldn't tell you the last time I saw him and he messaged me out of the blue a couple weeks back. And he's like, so I've been watching you for over a year now. Tell me what a guy's got to do to get the hookup. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know. I'm like, yeah, tell me what the hookup, what? <laughs> like just the I'm not hooking up, but I'll <laughs> give you products. <laughs> yeah. But no, the way he said it, he's like, you know, and then the conversation, like talk about what are you looking for and he just wanted the energy he didn't want the weight loss he didn't want the mood support he just wanted the energy um but people are watching whether you think it or not like he's not one to comment he's not one to like on my posts or stories um you guys are people are watching <laughs> yeah like so this girl she ordered two weeks ago i want to say a week ago. She's about, she's getting her products tomorrow. So whatever timeline that tells you. The first time she sent me a message, you guys, June 13th, 2019. <laughs> and I just kept reaching back out to her. And sometimes it was like Thrive related. If I had a sale, like, Hey, I know you said you were interested a long time ago. I just wanted to let you know, I have this going on. Just saying that like nonchalant, wishing her happy birthday on her birthday every year <laughs> um twice saying like here's another one she's like i can't order this was back in 2019 i don't have the money um just replying to her posts saying like your post and i one time i was like your posts always crack me up she's like i need a hobby and then just conversation conversation sent her my link she finally got in then she asked me another question still didn't do it and she asked me another question, still didn't do it until, what day was this? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I hate that vanish mode. Why do they do that? Who wants to be secretive in their messages? That's shady. November 30th, I said, hey, if you're ready to order, I have 30% off today. It's Cyber Monday. And she said, I'm ready. I was like, holy shit, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> But that is sometimes how it goes. Not everybody is going to be like, yes, I'm ready to order on the first try. It's just not going to happen. And it, I, at this point, I don't get frustrated anymore. I, I get that it's frustrating when like promotions come out and you want to achieve them and you don't. So like this three month, 200 K thing, I wanted it. It wasn't my time. There's going to be more promotions. You guys promise. 
there was a fourth, there was a 4k bonus last year and last year, October or no. Yeah. October. My husband ended that month. 3,429. I about shot myself. I was so pissed. But I thought to myself, there's going to be something else that's even better. And that's why it didn't happen for me this time. It's fine. Like, why are we putting expect so many expectations on ourselves? If you go through, I think what's happening is you're focused so much on your own success instead of just focusing on helping people. And that's where you lose motivation. That's where you you get frustrated. That's where others aren't seeing value is because you're internally focused too much. <laughs> yeah, fuck him, Randy. Sorry, pardon my language. Yeah. And well, the, uh, honestly, the average person needs eight to 10 touches before they actually show a genuine interest. So whether that's a touch through a post, maybe it's one time they see you say a story, maybe that's one time they watch a live, maybe you message them one time and talk to them about it, maybe you follow up with them again with a deal, um, maybe you say happy birthday to them, then maybe one time you comment on one of their posts, and then finally they haven't seen another story of yours and they're like, all right, it takes sometimes eight touches, that's why consistency is so important, and like, what if it changes their life, you guys? Like, come on, quit being so internally focused. I think we want, like, for me included, I want to quit my damn part-time job so bad. Like, you guys have no idea. I sit there and I literally work my business at my job because there's nothing to do. And I'm like, God, this is a waste of my gifts. This is a waste of my gifts. But when I get to internally focused on what my goals are, I think it's important to have goals and you want to paint your future. Yes. But if that's all you're looking at, you're going to get the frustration. You're going to get people that don't see value in what you're talking about. You're going to lose your mindset. You're going to lose your motivation because you're so narrow-mindedly focused on your, on your goals as opposed to like, who is the next person that I can help? Maybe it's I'm uplifting them today by commenting how nice they look in their picture. Maybe it's I'm reaching out to one of you on my team saying like, hey, how are you doing? That's the impact I can leave for the day. Maybe my impact is following up, just following up with a customer and saying like, hey, how are things going? Is there anything I can get you that would help? Maybe it's just, I don't know, whatever that is. Like sometimes your impact doesn't even have to relate to you signing a customer or achieving a goal that you you put up. Your impact is much more bigger than a singular event or a singular, singular thing. It's a culmination of things. And sometimes it's just that you were there for somebody when they needed it. So I think just switching out of that mentality where you're thinking about yourself and try to think of like, who are my audience is talking about how tired they are all the time. Who in my audience has three kids at home right now and is probably ready to pull her hair out? Reach out to her and just say like, hey, how are things going? You never know if you send that message when they're like, girl, I've been meaning to reach out to you about that. Like it happens all the time. So I want to make sure that I have enough time. Oh my God. Let's talk about the Ultimate Thriver real quick. So um, Ultimate Thriver starts January 1st. And the way that it works, oh, I think a lot of you are here for the last one, except for Heather and Melissa and maybe, no, I think Amanda was here too. They, so probably I'm guessing next week, the following week, they'll have you um, submit a picture, your before picture. And then you have to be, Mom grew up and have used that. See, there you go. That's a good idea. Moms need this. Moms need this. <laughs> um, and then you have to have it submitted before January 1st, before it starts. And then you have to have an active auto ship. So what I personally would do as a promoter is if, if you are still in the in the place where you do need to utilize your credits for your own personal product, set it for the 5th utilize your credits. It'll still work to count towards it, but you do have to maintain auto ship for those three months, which is, it's not a bad thing because you get a free extra box of mix. So it's not a bad thing. Um, 
how I am marketing this to people. I am searching my messenger first, or I did already do this. Searched my messenger just for the word weight loss or appetite control or whatever verbiage I might have used that has to do with a body transformation. <clears throat> and reached out to that person like saying, I don't know if this is still a priority of yours, but if it is, I have this great opportunity for you to potentially earn some crazy cash prizes. Like, are you interested in joining with me? And I say with me because I want them to do it with me so that I can check in with them. We can talk about things. Maybe I can provide them value with like recipes or just even like holding them accountable, whatever. So I'm searched through all of my messages and message those people. Um, I did talk about it in my stories today. I talked about how like we all know that like 90% of people send set a new year's resolution of wanting to lose weight. Who else gained the quarantine 15 <laughs> besides me and said like, I have a great opportunity for you to motivate yourself even more. Um, if you feel like you failed in the past, maybe this is what you need is what I said in my stories. And then I just posted the slides of like the before and afters from before um, the one last time and just touched on all of them. 50 freaking thousand dollars, you guys, for first prize for losing weight or getting in shape, like $50,000. I can tell you that a lot of people, you might think like, oh, I don't have a chance. Why do I even want to try? Do you know how many people fail at their new year's resolution by February? 80% of people fail at the resolutions by February. So you have a shot. And the, one of the girls that was the main prize winner, I was following her for a long time. So I feel like I know her. <laughs> I even messaged her and said congratulations when she won. So if you feel like it's such a far shot for you, it's not. So we're going to do this together. I know a lot of you have said that you wanted to do it. Um... I told my husband, like, I don't care what it takes. It's three months. I, I want the $50,000. Like, do you know how much that could change our life? So much. I could quit my part-time job. Guys. <sighs> um, and that, and I told him, I'm like, I am going to put post-its all over my house that say $50,000 on my fridge. I'm going to put them on my door. I'm going to put them on my elliptical I'm going to put them on the couch. <laughs> like when I want to sit down, like I am so excited for this, you guys. I'm so excited for us to do it together. Um, so that's how I'm personally, I'm going to do a live about it. I was going to do a live today, but that did not happen. <sighs> My life got crazy. So that's what I'm personally doing. So if you guys want other verbiage or anything, put them on the Oreos. <laughs> Facts put them on the pantry. Like I am, I'm legitimately putting them everywhere. $50,000 Megan. That just goes, that's like the mindset thing. If you're not strong enough in your mindset to like not eat the damn Oreo, you got to put a visual on it. Like, do you really want to eat that? Or do you want that $50,000 baby? I'm like, I want that $50,000. So I hope this helped you. I hope it rejuvenated you guys. Like if you ever feel like you're having a day, please reach out to me, please. So that I can hopefully help you get out of that, that mindset. And I can tell you by me helping you, it helps me to get out of my, my mindset sometimes. So I really like appreciate when you guys reach out to me because it helps me just as much as it helps you guys. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like even last place is 10,000. That's a lot. Like, we could pay off my husband's car with that. I mean, I know you have to pay taxes on it, but whatever. That's a lot of money. Plus, like, to show your audience, like, hey, I won this. And check out my hot bod before the summer. <laughs> like, hello. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Okay. So, I'm going to stop recording. Mm -hmm.